everyone, and welcome to Meadow Lane Elementary School, the home of the Mighty Wildcats, where we are super great, getting better every day, the place where everybody is somebody, and failure is not an option on the medals. We will follow the program as outlined. First, we have Vernon Gamble and Christian Sadelik to lead us in the pledge. Vernon, Christian, please come forward. Everyone, please stand. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Thank you, scholars. And I omit it saying thank you all for coming today and taking time out of your day to celebrate this special occasion with the Meadow Lane family. So thank you for coming out. At this time, we're gonna, with our tradition, our morning tradition, what we normally do every morning at Meadow Lane, we do the Phoenix City Mission Statement. Amaria Horrence and Kaylin Allen will recite Phoenix City Schools Mission Statement. Come forward, girls. Phoenix City School Mission Statement. In collaboration with families and community members who are personally committed to the success of each student, Phoenix City School strives to a premier school system. Staff members and family engage students and inspire their emotional, ethical, intellectual, physical, and social development through an inquiry-based teaching approach to utilization of innovative practices to foster student ownership of learning. These empowered students will possess the ability to adapt in an ever-changing world and will become responsible and productive citizens who positively impact society. Thank you, scholars, and please know that was done from, from memory. They know it, and they've been practicing, and they've, great job, girls. Thank you so much. At this time, Mr. Wilkes will come and recognize our guests, as well as the occasion. Thank you, Ms. McDonald. Students, excellent job. You really showed your superintendent up this morning. I can't do that, okay? I cannot do that. It is great to see everyone here today. This is a truly a momentous occasion. Uh, I'm very excited about our announcement today. I do want to recognize our guests before we get started today. Uh, our members of our Phoenix City Board of Education, when I call your name, if you don't mind, please stand. Dr. Misha Patrick is our president. Our vice president is Reverend Brady Baird. Ms. Pat Alexander, Ms. Fran Ellis, Mr. Samuel Estrada, Mr. Will Lawrence, and Mr. Todd Stanfield. Please give these people a nice round of applause. We have on stage with us today, and he'll speak in just a moment, the Honorable Eddie Lowe, who is Mayor of Phoenix City. Mr. Arthur Day, I saw Mr. Day come in, he's right here. Mr. Day, our City Councilman, and we appreciate him being here. He's very proud of his district, and uh, that, he would be here regardless of where we would be. He is always ever present, but uh, he, this is special for him today as it is the mayor, and he'll explain why in just a few moments. Community members, we're very proud that you're with us today. All of our stakeholders, our media friends that are here with us today, thank you so very much. Administrative team from across the system, we're in this thing all together, and you have joined us here today at Meadowlane to celebrate their accomplishments, but in a way we're also recognizing your efforts. I think Ms. McDonald may allude to that in just a few moments about the camaraderie and the teamwork that is necessary. And of course today I want to recognize our host, Madeleine Elementary School. Of course on stage with me now, you've already heard speak, Ms. Aretha McDonald, the fine staff here at Madeleine Elementary School. And we are present with us today 
fourth and fifth grade students and students, if it were not for you and your performance, we would not be here today. So congratulations to all of you and welcome. It was the week of Thanksgiving break. Mr. McDonald and Dr. Selden and I received an email. It may have been the Wednesday of Thanksgiving break, almost Thanksgiving. And I got an email and I looked at it and I said, this is a hoax. And Jackie Sains has said, when people fish, you don't open that email. <laughs> but I did, Jackie. And I called the State Department and I said, Amanda, what does this mean? She says, congratulations, Mr. Wilkes, Meadow Lane School is a national distinguished school. So if you'll take a look at your program today, on the right hand side, on the inside, there's a good bit of information about the distinguished schools and that award. It used to be called Title I Distinguished School Award, but now it's made reference to as the ESSA National Distinguished School Award. If you go to the second paragraph, the first paragraph just briefly describes how the uh, schools are selected. Know this, that there are three categories in which any school in the nation can be recognized, and Meadow Lane is being recognized for Category 2 closing the achievement gap between student groups. And you have to do this for two consecutive years. We have a lot of schools represented today that some of this criteria fits you. The key is you have to do it for two years consecutively, okay? The criteria for this award, you must be a Title I school. You must have a poverty rate greater than 90%. And you've got to have an overall growth rate of 90% or greater and a 65% uh, or greater rate in categories three and four in both reading and mathematics. That is the reason we're on the stage today. That is the reason we are here at Middle Lane Elementary School. Let me say this for our media especially. There was no application for us to complete. There, were, there was no educational jargon. There were no letters of reference. There was no application to fill out. There were no deadlines to meet. You're receiving this award today on data, on the truth, on the facts. So there was no special consideration <coughs> given other than the data. So that makes it even more special to me we were not expecting this. We, we knew that we had improved. And we had talked about some other awards that we felt like we still might receive in the future. But this was not on the radar. So to me, that adds credence uh, to this award here today. There are 73 schools across the nation that have been named the 2019 National Asset Distinguished Schools. And they will be, as we will be, recognized on a national stage in Atlanta in February. I want you to note on the back side of your programs today, and I also want to tell you this, that there is a National Distinguished School website that you can all go to, and they have a nice map of all the schools that have ever been named, okay? I want you to understand that since they've been doing this, only seven schools in the state of Alabama in any of the three categories have ever been recognized. In category two that we're being recognized for today, we are the fourth school that has been recognized. And if you think that the competition is any different in surrounding states, know this, that in Georgia, there have been previously in all three categories recognized seven schools, in Mississippi, six, and in Florida, four. So this is indeed a huge honor and a huge day at, at Meadow Lane. And you'll also note on the back, the other schools and in the state of Alabama that have been recognized in category two, 
We have Wilmer Elementary School in Wilmer, Alabama. In 2015, we also have George Hall Elementary School in Mobile. And in 2014, in Sycamore, Alabama, Sycamore Elementary School. Know that this award is not given out every year because apparently a school in Alabama did not meet the criteria. So this is not an automatic. It's not something that's done annually. And it's possible for more than one school to receive this recognition in a year's time. So today, Madeleine, you stand on top of the state. You're the only, the fourth school in category two in the state of Alabama to ever be recognized for this award. You're a beacon to the state and you are a beacon to the nation. You've demonstrated that regardless of your social economic status, that you can dream and you have dreamed and you have achieved and you have been successful and you will, students, one day be a productive member of society. You've not let the conditions of life dictate who you are and who you can be. There are no excuses here at Meadowlane. So students today, some of your fifth graders from last year, they've gone on to PCIS. But fourth graders and fifth graders, it's your test scores that have got us here today. And for that, we say congratulations. <laughs> to our teachers, we extend that same congratulations. For those of you that have been with us a, a while, you might have remembered back in 2014 when the truck rolled through the system and we collected math textbooks. And we said, you'll teach math this year without a textbook, and uh, without a textbook, and you will teach the standards. And then we realized we had to go back and unpack those standards. And we constantly make reference back to those standards. You have, I won't say endured, but you have participated in so much professional training over the last couple of years. You have probably not had a summer off since 2014. You have done a tremendous job here. You have taken the data and you've let that data drive the instruction and you have implemented countless programs here at Meadowlane. And you have done it for one reason and one reason only. You care deeply about your students. So to the staff here, to the teachers of Meadowlane, we say congratulations. Every school has to have and needs to have a fearless leader, an instructional leader. And Ms. McDonald, to whom much is given, much is expected, and much has been received. That's not always the case, but it is the case at Meadowlane. Ms. McDonald was a wonderful instructional coach. She has a primary education background. She proved herself, Ms. Peters, at CFA, that if you can control 14, 15 year olds and you can help lead the instruction of that school, surely, Ms. McDonald, you could handle six year olds. <laughs> and high school people, I challenge you to hang around, okay? <laughs> it's a little bit different. So a few years ago, you were named to this school as the instructional leader. Ms. McDonald is without fear. Dr. Bonnie Burns gave me a book a few years ago. Dr. Burns, I don't know if you recall this, but it talked about running to the roar. That when there are Mary Lowe lions on the street, the tendency for most people is to do what? Run. Ms. McDonald runs to the roar. Whatever the occasion, whatever the need, it does not matter if it's home visits that need to be made. It does not matter if it's bingo that needs to be played with the community members down the street. Ms. McDonald's there. She can lead a parade and she can lead a data meeting. Ms. McDonald has done a wonderful job 
at Meadow Lane Elementary School. She is kind, she is compassionate, she can be firm, and she can make difficult decisions all with a lovely smile. <laughs> Does she not have a wonderful smile? So, Ms. McDonald, to you today, we say congratulations, job well done. There's another group that I want to recognize today. Colleagues, I've already recognized you. Um, she will probably allude to you either in private or here on the stage today. I have no idea what she's going to say. But she will probably allude to the fact that it takes everybody a team. And we rely heavily in leadership on one another. We've had tremendous support, Dr. Selden, Mr. Blevins, from central office and from all the staff there. So to the family of Phoenix City Schools, we say thank you and congratulations to you as well. I'm going to call on stage now the Honorable Eddie Lowe, Mayor of Phoenix City. He attended Meadow Lane School back in the early 90s. <laughs> Not, uh, not, but he's going to come and I'm sure he's going to share uh, some con congratulatory remarks. Mayor Lowe, please welcome. Good morning. And congratulations to Mellon Lane. I did attend school here uh, over 45 years ago and actually about 49 years ago. So you can round that up to 50 years. <coughs> You probably can tell that because of the uh, color of my hair. But uh, as I was walking in, I started reminiscing that uh, I attended this school, like I said, over 45 years ago. And I am grateful to have this opportunity because this is the community. Um, one of the things you've heard me say, or you may have heard me say, is that uh, the school system is only as good as the city municipality, and the city municipality is only as good as our school system. This is a big, big deal. But I do want to say congratulations to all your staff. It takes a lot of hard work to accomplish this to the student, and particularly uh, to Vernon, Tristan, and Mariah, and Kayleen. You, you all, listen, it's not easy to stand up here and talk in front of people. You have courage. I'm Future is bright with leaders, so congratulations. And I would like for you all all stand and give them a hand for being able to. Good job. I mean, to be able to have, to be able to have the courage to stand up and talk in front of people is not always an easy task. But you all are distinguished. How do you become distinguished? It takes work. You become distinguished not because of who you are or where you're from. And yeah, all the facts states that, you know, this is a uh, very low to moderate income area, private to rate 90%, Title I school. Those are the facts. They are facts. But the thing we have to have, and the thing that you have had, and your staff, is that you've had faith. And faith always can turn around facts. Now. I'm an ex-football player, a lot of you all may know, and I always use a lot of examples from playing football. You know, I, I weighed 190 pounds playing uh, middle linebacker, and the facts was that I was small. But because of my faith, I was able to achieve and to play. And that's what you all have done, is you've had the faith. But it's also because of the community, also because of the team. My college coach, and I'm not going to call the name because I know some of them like other schools, and I respect that. But he said you have to be a team. You have to be a village. You have to be on the same team in unison. And he would always do this. He would hold up his hand and say, look, when you fight to be distinguished, you can't fight like this. You're separated. But you fight not to hurt people or to bruise people, but you fight to be distinguished. And you fought to be distinguished, but you, you can't fight this way. But when you do this, 
you can fight. You can fight for a common cause. You can fight for a purpose that in unison you, be, you can become distinguished as a team. And your team has done that. But the amazing thing about this team, before we get started, you have a person on your team that is black. You have one that is white. You have one that's Samoan. You have one that from Italy. You have one from Australia. And the amazing thing is that you forget about all that stuff, different cultures, different beliefs, different type foods you like. But you can always come together to fight, to be distinguished for a purpose. And I'm a kind of a Pollyanna utopia guy. I just believe if you can get a bunch of guys who can knock heads from different areas to come together to fight to be distinguished, we can do that in our community and in our school system. And that's what you all have done here at Metal Lane, to become distinguished. And I am very, very proud of that. And we have to keep challenging each other. We have to keep fighting because let me tell you this. The school system is only as good as our city, and the city is only as good as our school system. And we are going to continue to see things to help this school system be able to get awards like this and beyond that. Because we are not fighting like this. We are fighting like this. And regardless of what the facts may say, you here at Metal Lane is distinguished. And we should all be proud to be in Phoenix City and for this school, for what the accomplishment they have done. Because the burden is on us. These young people, you know, there's a bear curve, and some of y'all have heard me say this. The good book only says 70 years. Where if you draw a bear curve, you start here at zero, 35 is here. On the back side, you go to 70. And there's a lot of us in here on the back side. Now, what we have to do is reach back over here and raise them up to take care of this community and take care of us one day. Not just here, but throughout this country and throughout this state. So congratulations. I am very proud to be the mayor of being able to have the say on my agenda that I was the mayor when Mel Lane School became distinguished. And it's something that they can't take away from this school system. It's something that they can't take away from Phoenix City. And to all the teachers and principals, to the board, we appreciate you all. To Mr. Wilkes, who we certainly appreciate, and I thank you. But let's remember this. The quickest way for any of us in a community to get ahead is to build our people up. And we have to start with our kids and our school system. Congratulations. May God continue to bless us, and let's always think of others more than we do ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, we're going to present the banner. So, board members, I will ask if you will form a single line here facing the audience at this time. Mayor Lowe, Ms. McDonald, Mr. Day, if you would, please all join us down front and we will unveil the banner. On behalf of Metal Lane faculty and staff, this recognition is very humbling, while at the same time an honor and a privilege to be recognized as a distinguished school for the state of Alabama. This recognition did not happen by chance or luck. It happened because of a collective effort and teamwork on behalf of the entire faculty and staff. Everyone worked extremely hard and they were dedicated to the vision and the mission. And most importantly, they were dedicated to MES scholars learning and growing. Teachers, I know you all remember um, the first year I started, second, third, fourth, and fifth, I, I stated that we were going to put Metal Lane on the map, jokingly, but I meant it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, that statement has now become a reality. We're on the map. <laughs> Today I stand before everyone in awe. I am so proud of my teachers and the students for a phenomenal academic school year for two years in a row. Students soared to new heights with the help and support and data-driven data instruction that was planned daily by their teachers to meet the needs of individual students. Great job, teachers, for understanding the significant role of goal setting and ensuring that students achieve their goals. And I'm going to start with my K through second teachers, Ms. Guja, Ms. Owens, Ms. Winslow, Ms. Purvis, Ms. Hughley. You all help build the foundation in preparing students for the next level. This would not be possible without your hard work in building a solid foundation for students to flourish. So great job, thank you, and I love you all. Grades three through five, yes, thank you. <laughs> Grades three through five teachers, Ms. Walton, Mr. Townsend, who is on military leave, Ms. Lindsay, Ms. Gilchrist, Ms. Greer. This day, this moment, this time would not be possible without your hard work, dedication, and your continuous effort in shaping and refining the foundation. Words alone cannot convey how proud I am and how much I appreciate all you've done ensuring that our scholars demonstrated growth and proficiency to help close the achievement gap between student groups. Great job. And I cannot think of a better team that is more deserving. Job well done. Thank you, and I love you guys as well. <laughs> Ms. Hooks, Ms. Baboa, you were not here with us on last year. Your journey into the new MES norm has just begun. Students, scholars, champions, what can I say? Job well done. You all put in the hard work, applying what the teachers taught, what the teachers taught you. Thanks for staying the course, staying focused, setting those goals and achieving those goals. Great job, scholars. I am so proud of each and every one of you. Your academic success journey has only begun. So please stay focused and continue. Continue down the path of greatness. I want to say a big thanks to my specialty area teachers, Ms. Dolan. Coach Berkland, Ms. Evans, Mr. Williams, support staff, Ms. Allen, Ms. C. Williams, Ms. Giles, bookkeeper, secretary, Ms. Hader, who is my rock and, and the heartbeat of MES, <laughs> um, custodian, Ms. Bellamy, Mr. Kendrick, CMP workers, Ms. Wood, Ms. Ms. Bynum, Ms. Smith, foster grandparents, um, Ms. Few, Ms. Long, you all played a major role. And for that, I am very grateful. Parents. Parents, thank you so much. This day, this moment would not be possible without you as well for attending all of the parent engagement activities, checking the homework, checking the folders, fundraisers, donations, and most importantly, staying true and buying into the vision and the mission of MES. So thank you for all that you have done for MES. We really appreciate it and we love you too. As I stated earlier, this day, this moment, and this time would not be possible without the teamwork starting from the top and trickling down to the masses. Phoenix City Board members, thank you all so much for what you do for all schools and all students every day, all day. So thank you so much and love you guys as well. <laughs> Thanks to everyone for help, for your help and support along the way. <clears throat> Mr. Wilkes, what can I say? <laughs> I <know>. <laughs> Thanks for pushing, coaching, and strategically working with principals, keeping students learning and growing at the forefront. 
creating a data-driven environment that not only focuses on data, but the action steps to ensure that the students are moving to the next level. District Elliott observation, providing feedback, data meetings, one-to-one -one initiatives, smart, lab, smart labs, discovery ad training, stemming students out of poverty initiative, I-3 initiative, district strategic plan. I could go on and on, but I would be here for a while. <laughs> so, and I just remember at the end of the school year, the principal's evaluation, um, Mr. Wilkes asked the question, do you think that I push principals too hard? I said, no, not really. <laughs> and then I said, because of the, I said, but if you had not pushed, MES would still be sitting at a 69. So thank you for the push. MES went from a 69 to a 70 to an 83, and scholars, champion teachers, you all know we're shooting for the A, 90 next year. You got it. All right. Mr. Blevins, thank you so much for providing the necessary perfect. No, that's Mr. Gertman. Mr. Gertman is that? <laughs> Mr. Gertman, who is not here with us today, and I want to say thank you to Mr. Gertman for providing the necessary professional development opportunities for principals as well as teachers and also not to mention the incorporation of the wind time and the visitations to the other schools and the growth mindset for building relationships. Now, Mr. Blevins, <laughs> thank you for assisting with staff and ensuring that we have the best and the brightest candidates um, and always answering the calls. When it comes to any incident at the school, you can call Mr. Blevins it doesn't matter what it is, he's going to answer, and he always has an answer. So thank you, Mr. Blevins. Dr. Selden, where are you? Thank you so much for being really firm with, <laughs> with the Title I funds and ensuring, <laughs> and ensuring that, but really, truly, ensuring that the funds are allocated to benefit the students. So he has to be firm. He has to be a stickler. Putting students first is important. It's all about the students. And thank you um, for working with all of us for the ACIP after school programs and answering any questions that may arise regarding Title I funding. So thank you, Dr. Selden. And then I'm going to try to speed up a little bit here. Dr. Burns, Special Education Department, Personnel Department, Accounting Department, Ms. Burns, um, Ms. Horn, Tech Department, Ms. Sanders, Mr. Jackie Shan Sands. Mandy Lorman, payroll, superintendent office, Ms. Talley, Ms. Jones, food and nutrition, transportation, Mr. Gibson, um, Mr. Walters, and the maintenance team. We, could, <laughs> we cannot live without you and your team and all that you do for schools. The upkeep and maintenance is very hard, but Mr. Walters and his team make it happen day in and day out. And of course, if I left someone off, please charge it to my head and not my heart. <laughs> Community members, um, outreach to Meadow Lane Ele Elementary School, Griffin South Lodge, Pine Hill, Golden Acres, Bethlehem, council members, state representatives, every gesture made directly or indirectly has had an impact on the lives of our scholars. So thank you. Last but certainly not least, my husband, my amazing husband, Mr. McDonald, um, thanks for being my friend, mentor being supportive, um, providing that unconditional love, and also allow me not to cook every day. <laughs> uh, if any, if any, <laughs> if any, but just thank you for your love and support throughout the years. Um, it would not be possible without you in my life, and thank you for um, SGS team, allowing your team to come down and work with our girls, mentoring our girls, um, SGS pearls, reading, providing books, etc. And also, most certainly, without my principal colleagues, I do not want, Ms. McDonough, I love you too. Um, and I, I don't want to leave out my principal colleagues. Um, you all have been amazing, and McDonald, you're in that too. McDonald, Thomas, Suchman, Richardson, Averitt, Kimball, Holmes, Cook, Peter, Satzer. I hope I didn't leave anybody out. Our bonding relationship has been valuable to me as a leader. I can pick up the phone and call a principal at any time if I need help. If I dial the first one and that person doesn't answer, 
I dial the next one. And if that person doesn't answer, Miss Norton, thank you. <laughs> Miss Norton, uh, thank you so much. Um, I love the friendly competition when it came to report cards and student achievement. We were on it. <laughs> uh, Suchman Richardson, you know, that friendly, and McDonald, that friendly competition, trying to see, what's your score? What's your score? <laughs> Who has the higher? I'm not going to tell you what my score is, because then you're going to try to make my <laughs> go down. No, it's really. And thank you so much for the entire um, principals, co my colleagues. Really, please know that this recognition is not only for Meadow Lane. It is for your schools, too. So thank you. I love you guys. And it's really for the entire district and the entire community. This means everything to everybody. So thank you. And also, I would definitely be remiss if I didn't um, thank my mother and my family for their love and support and encouragement. And I want to say thanks to everyone for celebrating this occasion with the MES family. Um, thanks, Mr. Wilkes, again for planning and organizing the event, along with the entire district office personnel, Ms. Talley, Ms. Jones setting up the refreshments, et cetera. And thanks to the um, education service team that are so graciously supervising K through second students. I know we need to get back. We need definitely need to get back. So, so at this time, I'm going to turn the microphone back over to Mr. Wilkes. So thank you and love you guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Ms. McDonald, and I just want to echo for everyone that worked so tirelessly today to make this happen so quickly after returning from winter break. Uh, you know who you are, the various departments and so forth. Thank you so much. So this concludes our program today with one exception. We have a couple of pictures that we want to take, and we want to take them in this order. I want the staff of Meadow Lane School to have your pictures taken first down front, very similar to what we just did with the board. Ms. McDonald and I will be with you with the banner. We'll do that photo. Then students, we want you to sit tight for just a second. I want the fourth and fifth grade students down front. And I have to say, media, my recommendation, if you use any photo, use one of our students because that's what this is all about today, okay? So students, we'll have your photo make, made second and team, PCS, administrators, supervisors, you'll be the third and final photo. So if you'll just hang around just for a few moments, we want to have a nice keepsake there. Ms. McDonald, we've left, I think we thanked everybody in the world, <laughs> United Nations and all the members of the Academy. I'm kidding. It's been a fantastic day. Go Meadow Lane, go Phoenix City Schools. This is the new norm. Let's do it again, okay? Thank you and God bless. <laughs> Teachers, if you would.